Hello fellow teachers and future teachers! For today, we have a special topic which is helpful in the teaching profession. Now as we say, good lesson planning is essential to the process of teaching and learning, and a teacher who is prepared is well on her way to a successful instructional experience. But there are many different types of lesson plans including daily lesson plans, weekly lesson plans, unit lesson plans, the topic or subject lesson plans, and the more advanced e-learning lesson plans today. Now you can also create lesson plans for different education levels depending on the length of each learning period or you can base it on your learner's ability. But in this video, we will be presenting the outline of several lesson plans which can be used by student teachers and even professionals who might have an interest in changing their new style of lesson planning. But for you, my student teachers, remember that detailed lesson plan should be your foundation. This will provide you mastery of what you will teach and will give you, the teacher, confidence in teaching. Now, just like what I've mentioned, I will just share semi-detailed lesson plans which are less intricate than the detailed lesson plan. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Now, before we come across the different kinds of lesson plans, let us just have a brief recap of the universal parts of the lesson plan. Now, common to all lesson plans are the following. First is the objective. Remember, objectives are the statement of your purpose. This is an objective statement itself which answers what students will be able to do at the end of the lesson or it might be during the conduct of lesson. Now the second is the subject matter. This includes the topic or the particular lesson itself. The subject matter also includes the references which are usually from the books or reliable internet websites. This also includes materials which refers to the objects and tools that serve as instructional aids for a particular subject matter. And this can also be a tangible tool like the realias, the dioramas, the photograph, or virtual tools like the virtual realities, augmented realities, simulation, and many more. Now the third part of the lesson plan is the procedures, which is the body of your lesson plan. The ways in which you will share information with students and the methods you'll use to help them assume a measure of mastery of that material. In a detailed lesson plan, the expected routines, lesson proper, activities are presented. Now the question and answers are also written. And while in the semi-detailed lesson plan, it has only contained procedures or steps to be used in the lesson proper. Now the fourth one is the evaluation. Now, it can take the form of a formative test consisting of 10 to 20 item multiple choice questions. Now, after the day's lesson, this will now determine the mastery of learning. For example, 95% of the class got 100% correct answers. Now, the fifth one is the assignment. This includes the questions, exercises, and or a set of practice specified by the teacher. Now, in order to succeed in discussing the assignment for the following day, the teacher gives focus or a specific question for the students to answer. And now, let's move on to the lesson planning proper. Now, the first one on our list is the most common kind of delivering the lessons, the inductive and deductive methods. Inductive method is more of a bottom-up approach moving from more specific to the more general in which we make specific observations, detect patterns, formulate hypotheses, and draw conclusions. Now how do we make an inductive lesson plan? We may use the universal parts and under the developmental activities after we have set the standard for the class discussion, we start by providing examples. Remember, specific examples to general or directly to your main topic. Now then, after discussing the examples, we let our students analyze, compare, and see the patterns. So we let them use the examples to derive the topic. Now, the deductive method, on the other hand, is essentially a top-down approach opposite to the inductive method. Now, this approach moves from more general to more specific. Now, in other words, we may begin the lesson with a general notion or theory, which we then narrow down to specific hypotheses, which are then tested. Now, for the deductive lesson plan, since this is general to specific, 
You present first the general idea and then discuss it by providing examples until your students can now restate the general idea based on how you discuss the examples. Now here is a good picture on how we can compare the inductive method with the deductive method. Remember, inductive method is from specific to general, while the deductive method is from general to specific. And as you can see, both inductive and deductive methods are usually done after the presentation of the lesson. Now after decoding these two plans, which do you think can deepen students' understanding of content and develop their inference and evidence-gathering skills? Which do you think also is easier to follow? Now the next plans are usually used for analytical subjects like mathematics and sciences, and they can also be used in subjects with hands-on and even problem-solving. Now these plans usually use constructivism approaches. Now for the first list, we have the problem solving. Now these plans reflect general rules for developing skills used in solving problems. In this process, the teacher develops a problem, then carefully accesses skills needed to solve the problem, and creates conditions and or parameters that act as guidelines for products or solutions. These same conditions and parameters also serve as evaluation criteria. Now as you can see, problem solving is usually done under discussion. So first, we present the problem. Then, we help the students plan for a solution. And then, we let them find or understand the problem. Now to help them find or understand the problem, I usually throw these questions to my students or I put this in a paper so they may answer individually or as a group. Now following these steps may help them identify the problem, look at what solutions have already been tried, and think of new ways to solve the problem. Now the first question that I usually ask is what do we want to accomplish, then what are the constraints, what do we know about these problems? What do we need to learn to solve this problem? And on the fifth one, they are going to write the possible solutions and of course, analyze the pros and cons of this solution. Then after that, they are going to choose the best solution among the possible solutions they have the right. Now for the evaluation phase, it would be better if performance-based assessments are done. So for example, we let them create posters showing how to solve the problem or prepare action plans. Now is this new to you? You can try it out in your lesson. Next on our list is the inquiry approach. Now this approach is usually referred to as the facilitation plans to help teachers remember their role as facilitators of learning rather than a fount of all wisdom. Now this notion also helps teachers structure lessons more loosely to allow student questions to drive the learning process without derailing it. Now this set of activities are usually done under the developmental activities after presenting and setting the standards. First, we give them the overview of what will happen. Then, we let our students raise questions. We let them formulate their hypothesis. Then, we allow them to gather data, prove their hypothesis, after which we discuss what happened in the lesson. But you have to make sure that during the discussion part, you as their teacher is the facilitator of learning and not the mere provider of knowledge. And we have Roger Bybee's 5 E's, which includes the progressive stages of engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. This plan is used for more constructivism approaches. At first look, this looks like a good model for hands-on, student-centered instructional learning. But in a critical sense, it is used as a linear progression. We start by engagement, then exploring, explaining, and elaborating follows. And then evaluating wraps up the process. For the enlightenment of this lesson parts, 
I purposely did not remove the universal plan, then we'll just place the 5E parts to have a good comparison with the universal parts. Take note that the 5E did not remove the essential parts, but its linear progression or processes helps the teacher build a strong foundation of knowledge through active participation in the lesson. Now to explain further, the engagement part establish a purpose of the lesson. And here, you can also present examples or instances of new lesson. Then on the exploration phase, we discuss new concepts and let the students practice new skills. Then, on the explanation phase, we develop mastery leading to formative assessment. Then in the elaboration, we find practical application of concepts and skills in their daily lives and make generalization and abstractions about the lesson. And then we evaluate afterwards or we assess their learning. But to cut this shorter, teachers often write their plan in 5E as is. So we have the objective, subject matter, procedure, and then the 5Es. And because most teachers cut the parts into 5, they usually forget the essential universal parts. That is why the 7Es are created. Now the 7Es was an extension of the 5E constructivist learning. The 7E model is an extension of its predecessor that has been expanded to ensure teachers don't leave out any essential instructional components. In the 7Es, two parts are added. The first one is the illicit phase before engaging, wherein we review first the previous lesson or we present here the new lesson. This is equivalent to the presentation phase of our universal plan. And then the last one is extend, which is the additional activities for application or remediation. Which do you think is the equivalent of this part to our universal plan? Right, this is equivalent to the assignment. Oh, so that's it for now. Those are just six and there are many different types of lesson plans to choose from. Hmm, how about two? What are the things to consider in planning? For me, oh, I always remember important things when I make lesson plans. I always look at the education levels, the length, the size, the learner abilities of the class, and always personalize the lesson. Staying simple, remember, is usually the best option. Using a clean and modern lesson plan design is one way to ensure that you can stay focused on your teaching. But simple doesn't have to mean boring though. Now watch out for more Lesson Planning 101 tips brought to you by Teacher Danny here in Fun and Learning. Have a good day. Bye-bye.